This meeting is being recorded. Okay, I love it when I hear recording in progress. This is Business Essentials for Creative Women. I'm really excited to be here and to share this information because I find that this is an area that for women as creatives that we often struggle with having structure, having strategy, and our industries are changing, whether we're in music, whether we're in acting, videography, photography, just being creative and being able to uh, marry our creativity with strategy and business sense and make sure that we can scale our business. It's really critical. And um, it can be a little tricky now because, like I said, our industry is changing. So let's jump right into some things that I think are really important. So um, <clears throat> first of all, my name is Sharon Harris. And um, if you don't know my background, I have an extensive background as a musician, um, as an educator. I worked at a nonprofit for many years, um, teach con uh, uh, current, currently, sorry, currently I teach uh, music industry studies at uh, University of the Arts in Philadelphia. I'm from Mount Vernon, New York. I'm a keyboardist and vocalist. So funny thing is I get this microaggression every time. Like, who do you sing with? I don't sing with anybody. I'm a keyboardist. So I tell them I played and I played for Barry White of all people. Um, so I love playing, um, worked with a lot of different people in the music industry over the years and have spoken at several colleges, universities. And also I host a show on Sirius XM called the Sharon Harris Experience, which I'm really excited about. Um, but I want to dive into women and why it's important for us to have a strategy you know, really key for us to have a strategy. Um, let me see, I'm just gonna try to get some information up here for you to see. So if you can just bear with me for a moment, I'm gonna see if I can share my screen with you as well. And that way you can see, oh, I got it. I got the, now I need to share. Okay, let's get the share going. I think I've got to get the share going first and then I can get the presentation up. Okay, here we go. All right, and now I need to enlarge it a bit. So I am going to get it enlarged for you so you can see it full screen. Um, you know, technology can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but all good. You know, all good. Let's see if I can get this up to full screen for you. It moves a little slow. <laughs> so there we go. So it's full screen. I was talking about my podcast on SiriusXM. Here it is, the Sharon Harris experience. Um, I want to dive into more things about how career goals are always evolving. And we have to remember that we're business and all great businesses need to implement organizational planning to ensure proper alignment address any issues and incorporate new practices and also best practices. So as musicians and creatives, we can tend to go with the wind, you know, with the wind. However, the industries, all of our creative industries are changing. And in order for us to be successful, we have to figure out how to change with it and what is going to work for for us because there's no cookie cutter formula so always keep that in mind i had a student really uh, recently ask me well you know what are the basics yes there are some basics when you're looking at things like artist management or whatever but you also have to really be sensitive to what's going on in the environment in in front of you you may live in a city or state where things move totally different or maybe you live in a state that has or country even that has better funding for the arts like that happens in some countries and sometimes it's not as competitive and then what do you have the capacity for so there are all these variables that we have around our lives you know do we have families do we live alone what do we want to do especially as women because as women I feel like we have so many things that are important to us and we want to accomplish 
And sometimes we find ourselves in this quandary of having to make a choice. Do I have children? Uh, do I get married? Do I buy a house? Do I stay here in this country? Whatever, you know, because for us, we have a timeline and that's very realistic for some of the things that we want to do. Um, but when it comes to our art and creativity, just know that there is no timeline there. We can do this at any point in our lives. We can stop what we're doing um, in another career and we can pivot because creativity is always a part of us and it's always going to be there. So, um, but we do deserve to uh, understand the resources and what's out there, uh, potential barriers that are going to help us mitigate um, you know, any issues, and we can have a full experience as a creative. So business essentials for creative women. So here's a little bit of an overview. Defining our objectives and goals, clarity on our needs, creating a plan, managing expectations, implementation, and measuring success, okay? So these are some key points that we have to begin to look at. Um, and what I'll be doing here is just kind of going through a little bit of creating a strategy, creating a business plan, just getting it off the ground. Now, this is a two-part boot camp, so we're gonna look at that first part today and um, and hopefully, by next week, we'll have some things in order for the next time you see me. Okay, so objectives versus goals. Goals are your big picture ideas. It's about where you want to go. And objectives are the concrete steps that are going to move you towards your goals. So, oops, let's look at some of the uh, items that you need. Resources, abilities, habits, commitment, resilience, grit right? Clarity. I always keep clarity at the forefront because clarity is going to help you in so many ways. Now, in terms of your strategy, we all need structure and this is going to help keep us focused. It's going to help keep us on track. It's going to help us reach the final destination. So if anybody's going to invest in you, they're going to ask hard questions from the standpoint of understanding their ROI or return on the investment. If I see somebody in the room and I know, oh my gosh, that person is looking to invest in artists like me and I meet the criteria, I may be able to approach them. But one thing they're going to ask for is um, some type of pitch, something written, a written document, because their financial people are going to go through all of my finances. They want to see my bank accounts. They want to see any type of projections. Where am I now? Where am I going to go? So gone are the feel good days of, oh my gosh, this artist is great. I can see what's going to happen with them and we're going to invest in them. That happens it's fewer and fewer at this point, and it's also based off of our numbers on socials because people are now looking at socials and they're saying, this person has an audience. We see that they have a huge audience in these key major cities, so we know that we can sell them there. So um, everything as we know it has changed, but this doesn't mean that we have to stop being creative. We just have to learn how to shift the paradigm and scale it so it works for us. So having a clear strategy that's going to give us clarity around understanding how corporations think, because now we have to think like businesses, right? You are a business. So one thing that I start off with is a discovery questionnaire. These are about 20 questions. I think there might be about 30 or 40 questions. And a lot of what I do is skewed off of um, working in the music industry. However, in any creative industry, you can change the language. So all of these skills are transferable. I always want to keep. I want, always want you to keep that in mind that all of this is transferable. So I have some questions here about how would you best describe yourself, your art, and your inspiration in three to four sentences. This is the beginning of your pitch. So if somebody says, "Well, tell me about yourself." Um, you don't want to say, you don't want a dissertation. You know, you just want to be able to clearly say, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is why I'm doing it. This is what I was inspired by or whatever. And this is, or maybe this is what I want to do in the future. But you want to keep it concise because you always want somebody to come back for more. Now, we there's this thought that if I give a lot of information that people are going to, you know, it's really complete. 
but people are going to start tuning out. People tune out, what, in about one to three minutes now? The attention span is a lot shorter. So unless you have their ear, but even if you have their ear, keep it short. And you can always say, I'd love to share more or tell me what you need from me. I'd love to discuss about, I'd love to discuss working with you in some capacity, but tell me what you need so we can discover if there's some synergy. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, but so in this discovery, discovery is not only questions about that, but these are questions for you to ask about your audience. Um, are you working with any other creative people? Uh, so about your audience, how are you reaching them? What calculated risks can you or have you taken? Now, there are some things that may be really risky in your career. And, you know, but is this something that you can do that is going to help? elevate your profile. So again, how it's working now is the decision makers are going onto socials. So say that there is a label or a manager or whatever that's looking at you. Um, they may look at, yes, you. They, they may say, okay, you've got talent, blah, 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 but are people really buying you? So you're almost like a product now, right? So it's like, our world is almost like, I hate to say it, but Amazon, where you can just go and say, you know, how many people are looking at this product or how many people bought this product? And if you go on Amazon and look, it tells you how many people actually bought a product and how many people are looking sometimes. So, um, but there, there's a lot of alignment that you can have if you can think about it. So part of this discovery exercise is trying to help you think as completely as to where you fit in, in this big world that's shifting, that's so much broader than it used to be. Okay, so the one thing that I like to start off with is a SWOT analysis. And I try to conduct one maybe every quarter, uh, maybe every six months or so. So it's reviewing your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, you can look at, I live in a, a city that is great for my industry, but my weaknesses are I don't do a lot of networking here or I'm busy. Um, my opportunities are I can get out there and I can uh, make myself known. My threats could be there's a lot of competition. So how do I cut through all the noise? By putting together a SWOT analysis, this is going to be the beginning of you doing exactly that cutting through the noise. So the SWOT analysis is going to help you to take inventory of your resources what and what is needed for you to reach your goals. So, okay, now let's talk about our plan. What is your goal? Remember your goal is your big picture item, your big picture item. And this is going to be similar to your mission. It's going to tie in with your mission. So my goal is to stand on all of the platforms of the world and speak in front of or sing in front of or act in front of or, uh, you know, do your filmmaking or videography or whatever, photography, dance, write out at least 20 of your top uh, actionable objectives. Right? Okay, just write them out. Choose three of them that are really important important to you, all right? Now, after you choose those three, write out three actions under each uh, item that is realistic for you, okay? And list, list the resources that you, you're going to need to get there. Now, the other thing that you're going to need is a budget. So remember, there's mostly a cost for everything, but you might look at that budget and go, I can barter for this. I can do this in exchange for blah, blah, blah. Or I know somebody who has this. Or I know a vendor and I can get this at a discount. Try to be creative when it comes to um, anything around your budget, any resources that you have. You might have a relative that does something and that can help you out with your budget. Um, include a time frame. So when you can start putting a timestamp onto your goals uh, and your actions, it makes them, it helps to make them measurable and makes them realistic. And it gives you something concrete. So if you say, um, like, oh, I'm going to have this new new uh, wardrobe made um, 
right? But if there's no date, what is your end plan? But I'm going to have this wardrobe made by May because I'm going to do a fashion. I'm going to do a um, new vlog or I'm going to do a, a photo shoot in early June. So I need to have everything together. So try to keep everything really actionable and measurable and set a date to it. So that way you have a completion. Okay, so when you're measuring success, how do I know if all of this is successful? Um, well, I have my KPIs or key performance indicators. So the other thing is when I am looking at my career overall, um, what do I want to, what am I going to do to be successful? How do I define success? Um, how am I marketing myself? Do I intend to tour, travel, go on auditions? Do I have a budget around what I'm doing? Is there a timeline or a commitment? And again, the audience is always going to come back to who is buying, who is who is in front of me. Um, so another point is managing expectations, right? So most artists can take three to 10 years to really become successful. Please don't try to compare yourself. I have that down here. Please don't try to compare yourself. Everybody has a different barrier, I mean, journey, and there are uh, things that can come up. There are definitely things that come You know, life will be lifing as you are growing your career. Like we just had a pandemic and thankfully we're still here, but our world shut down, right? Uh, be realistic about everything. So I run into a lot of artists who are just like, I just want to be on stage. I just want to be on stage. Well, are you ready to be on stage? Because being on stage has requirements. So if you're really serious about being on stage, you have to make sure that you have the support and training to get there and to dominate. Okay? To dominate. Um, so don't get caught up. Being an artist is it's about art and expression and sharing. And yes, some people have that gift of sharing and touching you. It happens in music. It happens in art. It happens in dance. It takes us to a different place. And that's what art should do, right? If it's like, I just want to, you know, do this. Think about how sustainable it is, right? Are you going to go after that? Like, I call it like fast food money, or are you going to draw something out where people are like, wow, I really appreciate that. And you're doing it because it's in your heart and you have something to say. Um, I like to think a classic artist. I like to think of sustainability in anything around art, whether it's visual, whether it's dance, whether it's choreography, anything, any type of art form. Okay. Now, as a woman, we know that there are unique, oh, excuse me, sorry. Um, we know that there are unique challenges for women, right? Competition. Women, we, we get triggered. We get triggered. So I have a bunch of words up here, competition, EQ, emotional quotient, which is tied in with EI, emotional intelligence, active listening, excellence, showing up your support circle and clarity, right? So my thing is having those blinders on and being able to just see right in front of you and not let the noise get to you. And that to me has been something that's helped me um, with my success in my field. I've been in a very male dominated field for probably most of my life because I started playing music very young, playing piano, not too many Girls were playing piano. Few were taking lessons, but I have to tell you that not too many of the the girls in, that I grew up with were pursuing music professionally because it just wasn't like the thing to do. Um, how did I get around competition? I became really good at what I did, you know, and I made friends with my competition. Okay, so I became friends and and respectfully respectfully friends and I get a lot of respect from male musicians which um feels good to me that people go wow Sharon I I want I want to work with you and I'm like wow I'm flattered 
um, emotional quotient. So we're known for being emotional. We have triggers. That's very real. Our hormones are very real. So take them seriously, but look, don't let them be a barrier to you. If you understand your hormonal cycle and what is going to trigger you around certain times of the month, for instance, that is going to help you, you know, so you really have to be in tune with yourself. So if you're like, I'm acting out of character, why, why am I being so emotional? Why am I crying about this? That could be very real for women, depending on what's going on. And it fluctuates. And believe me, as it, as you get older and you start shifting into perimenopause, menopause, there are a whole different set of hormones that are going to be imbalanced. So I'm going to tell you some things about uh, balancing when you're looking at that emotional quotient and your hormones, and this is very woman-specific. Be mindful of your diet, your exercise. Make sure that you're taking time to meditate, to focus, and to always say something positive, right? Somebody may say something to you that's very demeaning, and I, I see women, women suffer from this so much more than men do where somebody will say something to a woman and a woman's soul will be crushed and you have to learn how to get right back up there and go what uh-uh no sis i'm not having it very seriously right so learn how to not take things so personally and to uh because that is something that it's played on with women a lot and it holds us back. Like women will go, I didn't know I could do this. Well, I feel empowered. You should feel empowered anyway, because women are powerful. Who else can, um, and there's a, there's a quote by William Golding. I'm going to try to find it. There is this amazing quote by w William Golding who says, you know, like, do not mess with a woman because a woman can just really take things and change them all around. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that quote is. Okay. Um, that quote says, I think women are foolish to pretend they are equal to men. They are far superior and always have been. Whatever you give a woman, she will make greater if you give her sperm, she will make a baby. If you give her a house, she will give you a home. If you give her groceries, she will give you a meal. If you give her a smile, she will give you her heart. She multiplies and enlarges whatever is given to her. So if you give her any crap, be ready to receive a ton of shit. All right? I'm going to post that because that is a powerful statement coming from a man, and it is absolutely true. And we have to understand and believe as women our power. We have to understand and believe in our power and what we give and what we're capable of. All right. Um, so here, I want to get back to the unique challenges. Active listening. We're very reactive as women. So when you hear somebody say something, just challenge yourself to be quiet and listen. You don't have to respond. You do not have to respond. Do not feel, oh, I'm going to say this. I'm, do not feel compelled to respond. Take your time. Walk away. Digest it. And let it melt into the sunset. So the one thing that we have to be very careful of is people pushing our buttons because we are reactionary by nature. And it's okay. This is the way we're wired. It's fun. However, learn how to act, listen actively and then maybe not do anything with it, right? Because what are you going to prove at the end of the day? Or do you have anything to prove or why? Just be who you are and stand firm and strong in who you are. Excellence, okay? Excellence is very important. There's a lot of mediocrity in the creative sector because Creativity makes people feel good. It makes us feel good as artists. But don't be mediocre. Really learn your craft. If you're a vocalist, if you're an instrumentalist, if you're acting, if you're dancing, work with somebody. Don't think, oh, I see what they're doing. I can do it on myself, on my own. No, you can't. You have to have a foundation and you have to know what that foundation is. Okay. Once you have the foundation under control and you have the technique, then you can make it your own. But spend, 
you know, those one to two, maybe three years, really understanding your craft and not doing it halfway. Showing up. This is a good one. How do you show up? And how do you expect people to show up? So if you're showing up and you're being professional and maybe somebody is being professional, that doesn't mean you need to fall into it. If you're showing up and somebody is being sloppy, that does not mean you need to fall into it. As a matter of fact, you need to guard yourself around people who are going to pull you out of your element. How you show up says volumes. It speaks volumes about who you are, um, the respect you have for yourself and the respect you have for your art. Okay. So please don't let anybody pull you out of your element. Show up, be proud of how you show up and you set a standard for showing up. All right. Now your support circle. Having a support circle is critical and it's also important to find like-minded women who are going to who are able to just pour into you and you're able to pour into them. Okay. So having that support circle where you know that you're going to walk out of there feeling good, getting some ideas, um, maybe even being inspired, maybe you're creating new partnerships or whatever, but having a support circle is really key, but making sure it's a good support circle. And the other part is clarity. You heard me talk about clarity earlier, but be clear. The clearer you are in your vision, the clearer your vision is going to come to you the way that you expect it to. Now, I didn't have anything on visioning here, but I want to include a little bit about visioning because visioning is something that's very real. Take time every day to vision, okay? Take time every day to sit down and understand what you want, where you want to go. Don't worry about how you're going to get there, but see that that goal. Remember, we talked about your goal and the objective. So see about see that goal and see where it is in the big picture and say what it is to you and be able to repeat it. And that's going to help you a lot. So here are 10 simple tips to guide your success. Treat yourself like a business read books on business and take business courses, learn what works, what needs work and what is not working. That is so key. That is so key. I want you to work on your craft and I want you to be excellent at what you do. So remove or lessen interactions with people that are not helping you progress. We have a lot of dead weight. We have a lot of dead weight around us. So you need to get rid of it if you do. Stay open to learning concepts and skills outside of your industry. This can really help enhance you. And sometimes you can find other ways to monetize your work by doing this. Learn to do things you don't like with gratitude, love, and appreciation. So many times there are opportunities that we fall into and we're like, man, why am I doing this? Pour love into it, pour gratitude, pour appreciation into it because it's a learning, it's something that you're going to learn from in the long run. Okay, and now surround yourself with successful people. That's not difficult. Maybe you might think it is. So if you're finding it difficult, one thing that you may want to look at is how you feel about yourself, your level of confidence. That's very key. Uh, always be honest with yourself. Um, I see, I've seen a lot of artists who are very, very enthusiastic about what they do. And I'm just like, they're just honestly not ready. Now, as this happens a lot with vocalists, you know, especially if you can speak, technically you can sing. So there's a whole, that's a whole other uh, class that I can go into. However, you have to understand how your body works as an instrument. And if you're not maximizing it, and if you're not understanding where the blocks are, it can make it look like maybe you don't know what you're doing. So I, I say that everybody can sing, everybody can do whatever they want, but they just have to, you have to really know what's going on and how to push through and figure out what's working for you. Um, never think you know everything. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a really hot topic because there are a lot of people who think that they know everything. And then at the end of the day, they end up getting 
or um, their imposter syndrome kicks in because they don't know everything. So you've got to really know, and you can't learn everything on YouTube. You can't learn everything on Instagram. Those are the worst places ever. Um, there needs to be formality, whether it is a mentor, whether it is jumping into a situation, a work situation, or um, an internship where you can learn the craft, learn the business, but really learn and try to learn from the best. Um, always focus on improving yourself and your art. So I was speaking to somebody about, and I mentioned something, I said, well, you know, Luther Vandross had a vocal coach and people were like, what? We thought he was great. Yes, he was, but he still worked with a vocal coach. And that's something, um, no matter if you're an instrumentalist, if you're an actor or whatever, you have those coaches and you have those coaches for life because they're going to push you and they're going to see things in you that you can't see in yourself. And it's your job to listen. Even if you're like, this is a really silly exercise. Uh uh, You listen to it because that exercise has an end game. And sometimes that coach or your vocal, you know, instructor, whatever, your your teacher knows what that end game is because they've seen it work either for themselves or for other people that they've worked with. Um, stay organized and consistent. Consistency, commitment, consistency, commitment. Really, really key. Um, so also, this is a book that I wrote, the, um, the Art of War for Creatives. It's a practical guide to self-discovery. It's going to help you out with strategy, personal growth for creatives of all types, building confidence, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great book for women, um, especially. Okay, I'm going to stop the share here because I wanted to also jump into a few other areas before we shut it down. Um, let me see. So let's get this. Okay. So we've been talking a lot about strategy, a lot about structure. So the more you have in place, the better off you are going to be. Um, so let's get to putting this plan together. Um, and I want to start with a few simple areas so as to not overwhelm you. Okay, so let's look at an assignment now. I love assignments. Do you love assignments? Maybe that's the teacher in me. I have a good assignment. So the first assignment that we're going to start with is building a budget template. Okay, we're going to simply start with your budget. And I have a uh, link to the form. And along with the budget, we're going to do the discovery uh, template. Also, we're going to answer a lot of questions about yourself. Okay. So your discovery and your budget, those are the first two. And next, we're going to work on that mission. What is your mission and what is your vision? All right. So those are the four items. Budget template, the discovery template, uh, the questionnaire, your mission, and your vision. And I think that that's enough for now because there are a lot of components to putting together a strategy, um, but I want to save some for next week. So that is all we're going to do for today, this part one. So look at this as part one, and we'll come back next week with part two. All right. I'll see you next time. Thank you all for being.